I'm getting ready to lay out the joist pockets on this seal log here to make sure that I get everything exactly like I want it. I'm going ahead on the other seal log and getting it ready to lay out so that I can work these kind of together. It's not that I have to, but it just makes it a little bit easier to make sure that I can get the pockets in there the way I want them. This is seawall seal log, and I've got it up here on the horses, and I've already planed it, and I've got both ends trued up with each other like I did on the, the first seal log. And I'm going to go ahead and, and cut this end off here and then get the total length cut on this, this particular log. Think I can handle that. I've got in my paperwork, I just drew this out and in each round you can keep up with what you've got going on. You have your log numbers that you can write down and it's round one. And there's a little note here that I'll be ripping the seal logs flat on the bottom, six inches from the center line. This log that we're standing by is a wall seal log. This is the front of the cabin. A wall and C wall are the seal logs. And I also have here the notch dimension, which the upper notch will be four and a half, and the lower notch will be three and a half. Now. I'll be explaining that a little bit later. Now what I like to do is you can see here I have butt left on A seal log and butt right on C seal log. The, the logs will be alternator butts and tips back and forth as the wall rises. But I like to put on the same, on the end, I like to have the butts lined up and the tips I wrote what log number I wanted to use on D wall, which was number eight. And on the A seal log on round one, I wanted to use log number 25 and log 40 on B wall and log 24 on the C wall seal log. There's room here to, uh, to make notations. There will be some more notes that I'll write on here as I go along in working these seal logs out. As you can see, the end log will cap over the seal log. There will only be an upper part of the notch cut on the seal logs. But on B and D wall, we'll have a, a complete notch. The upper and the lower part of the notch will be cut in the log. Okay, I've, I've gone ahead and I've laid out the joist pockets all the way down this uh, a wall seal log i've got them all laid out and just about ready to cut them and each one is numbered which uh, seal log will go where i made up a chart here with the joist layout this particular log that i'm standing next to is the a wall seal log and when i did uh, i laid my joist out here and i'd already picked out which joist I wanted to go where, and I just wrote the numbers on the the area or the what I've got laid out for the joist. And you can see I wrote the butt, tip, butt, tip, butt, tip, butt, tip, and so on, so that I can alternate those just like I would in a, in the wall. And I had a chart made up that had the sizes of the butts and the tips, uh, the widths and the heights, all of these that you're looking at here is on the A wall seal log and I'm laying everything out actually from the butt of the log. So I came 16 inches to the center of each one of these. And then I took my number, the width of it, and I centered this on the my layout mark. You might be able to still see my little center mark here that I'd made on number five. And I went down through, went down the log and, and laid all of those out and the heights of them. Now what I'm doing, I'm coming up 
seven inches from the center line. And I went down through there where each uh, joist is gonna be. I just went down through there marking 16 inch centers. I darkened the white chalk line so that I could sit real well. And I measured up seven and a half inches from the center line. It's, this is the, the butt of the joist, the big end. I set my tape on seven and a half inches on the center line. This here, it will be the top of the joist. And since the joist was five and five eighths of an inch high, I came back down five and five eighths of an inch there and made two marks, one on either side and just connected them with a straight edge. And I took my square and I laid the square on this mark here on the center line of the log and I just marked up each shoulder and got my mark there. Now this one was uh, number five is uh, five inches wide on the, the width. So I came two and a half inches from the center and made a mark and just squared off of the center line with my framing square and got those, those marks there. And I'm gonna walk around and show you what I did on the top side for the layout. I took my square and I marked down from the inside face of the log three and a quarter inches. Now these tenons are three inches will actually be pocketed in here but I'm giving myself just a little bit of slack because I'll be cutting this with a chainsaw and so I just on the inside leg inside of the short leg I just made a mark at three and a quarter came down here and made another mark at three and a quarter and then drew a line across there and I also got a straight down square mark like I would if I was going to cut the end of a log off I did the same thing on both sides of where this will be cut out but as you can see this right here this little mark actually is the mark that I made this mark here is running at a little bit of an angle about a sixteenth of an inch I don't want any interference in this area right in here when I put that joist in because I'll have to drive it in it's going to fit really tight and this this area here will be what's cut out and I'll do the same thing on the C wall seal log that I did on the A wall seal log I'll lay out all my pockets for the joist and get these ready to cut See, I could just line up my square on these marks here, the darkened marks, and I can get my shoulders here. And then, as I said before, I came up seven and a half inches from the center line to the top of the joist. And since this joist was, uh, I think it was five and three quarters, I came back down and got this mark right here, which would be the bottom of the joist. As you can see, there is plenty, plenty wood underneath that joist pocket to hold it up. These seal logs are, are pretty stout, and they will definitely carry the weight of the joist and the floor. Now, what I did, trying to get out of the mud here, I put the biggest of the joist in the center of the room, and the, these joists right in here are the, my biggest joist in a started working back towards the end of the building, towards B and D wall with the next smaller uh, joist diameter. Since I will be cutting this pocket with a chainsaw and I'm going cross grain, I want to score this down through here and here and also here with a utility knife. And I've got this blade pretty sharp. And when you're scoring, as you can see, I have this little square on the outside of the pocket, and I'm just hiding that line. I'm just covering it up. And when you're scoring stuff like this, you always score on the waist side. Between these two lines, this will all be gone. It'll be cut out. So I'm using a steel square, and I'm just making a light pass, and I'm pressing that on the square pretty good because I don't want it to move. You don't want to press too hard on this 
just a series of little light cuts. And when I come across that with a chainsaw, I won't have to worry about splintering this side of it out. And then I'm coming over here and I'm going on the outside and I'm just covering the line. And I take my knife, just, just light, light cuts. Don't try to go too deep at one time. And just light, just light cuts. You don't have to press too hard. Make a few cuts there. And when you start cleaning this out with your chisel, those little score lines will show up. And when you get to that score line, you'll know that you've got right up to where you need to be when you're cleaning it up. Okay, before we cut these pockets out, it's good to take your level and set it back up on the log and make sure that your log hasn't got bumped uh, and it's still level. And I'll tell you the reason for that when I make this plunge cut. And I'll show you what I do. I'm gonna move this out of the way. And I'm gonna start my saw. I'll make a cut here and a cut here. Then I'll make my plunge cut. And then there'll be another plunge cut here that I'll make with a, a different saw. And I'm just gonna make this, these two cuts. And if you're not comfortable with making a plunge cut in, you can just make a series of cuts. And I'll, I'll just do that and show you how you can. All right, to know how deep to plunge this, I've laid my bar up here and kind of got the tip of it up here about as far as I want to go. And I'm looking down the edge of the log and you can see the, the letters of the steel. I need to come in to about the T. Now, if you wanted to, you could just take a magic marker or something that you could mark, make a little mark on your bar to kind of know where to stop when you, when you plunge this in. You'll, you'll have a, a gauge to go by. But I, I, I can see I need to go about to the T, and that's where I'll stop. And then I'll, I'll move the saw this way and this way to come over to this cut here. And when I stick the tip of the bar in, I'm just going to go in about this far. Now this is where having the log still level comes in handy. Because then I can lay my torpedo level on the bar and I can adjust the back of the saw either up or down to make sure I'm coming straight in or parallel with the face of the log. Okay, I'm going to use this little this little steel chainsaw. I've got a 12-inch carving bar on it. And I'm going to make that plunge cut on the face of the log, the, which would actually be the bottom edge of the pocket for the floor joist. And it'll be going three inches into the log. And you can see I made a mark here with the magic marker at three inches from the, the end there. And that's where I'll know to stop when I get down to this line that I've made on the end of the bar.
All right, I'm going to make two more little tiny cuts with this carbon bar. Since the end of my chainsaw that I used to make these cuts here is pretty round and it's quite a bit bigger than this. So right in the bottom of this pocket, I need to clip some of that wood. And with this little tiny tip on this carving bar, I can just reach in there and just saw down and cut that loose. I'll be able to clean all of this up with a chisel, with a framing chisel. got a combination square here and I've got it set on three inches now the depth from the inside face to the back side of these pockets is about three and a quarter I gave myself a little bit of slack on the back side of the pocket for the end of the joist where it uh, I wouldn't have to worry about that joist hitting the back of the pocket and what I do I just, I've got it on three inches and I can just go around these shoulders here and the, the bottom part of the, the pocket where the, the bottom edge of the, the joist will set. And I can check that and I can come on, especially on this, this is the part that's a little more critical where the joist sets so that you have full bearing all the way across. And so I'll just take a chisel and I'll clean all of this wood out back to this line as you can see, I kind of stayed away from that line with that, uh, with that chainsaw with the carving bar. I was kind of in an awkward position cutting that, standing on the ground. But I'm just going to take a chisel. This is just an inch and a half chisel. And I'm just going to start coming down and start shaving that, that wood off. I'll shave some and I'll check it to see how I'm doing. You have to get some on the side. And you can also use a mallet where you can pound on it to get right in that corner. And I can come back here, take my mallet, kind of cut that excess out. This is where you want a really, really sharp chisel. You can see I'm using a wooden mallet on my chisel. These chisels have wooden handles with a, a steel ferrule there. If you use a metal hammer, all you're going to do is mushroom this out. And uh, just mess up the end of your hammer, handle. Okay, I've got this to where I can start this one down. Cleaning that excess out. Oh. And since I did score this line with my utility knife, 
I'm going to take this two inch chisel and I'm going to lay it right in my score where I actually cut it. When you're cleaning out a, a pocket or a mortise and you have your exact spot here established, you don't want to go down in there with your chisel and start pulling back on that because all you're doing is crushing this and distorting it and you actually lose your real clean line when you do that. So you just kind of stay at the top, work your way down. And when you start getting close, that's when you can take your, your square and start checking it down through there. And I've got that just about on the money there. This has been scored here. So I can take my chisel, as you can see, that's just kind of coming right straight across there. And I can go right up to that score line and get a nice clean cut. And I can take my square and just check to make sure let me move this down where my shoulder actually is established that I don't have any wood from this point in the way all the way down. And that seems to be pretty clean. So I can do the other side now. Just, just pushing that chisel till it comes right up into that score mark. I have my slight undercut here so that the, the joist won't be hanging up when it slides into the pocket. And then the last thing I do is just kind of clean this up back here where my chainsaw plunged through. Just kind of shaving that out. Okay, the last thing that I'll do to this pocket, I'll take some Anchor Seal, which is a water-based paraffin uh, product, and I'm going to coat the inside of this with the uh, Anchor Seal. And when the moisture evaporates from it, it will leave a, a wax coating on this, and it will coat the end grain, which is what I really am concerned about, is having the end grain coated and the, the bottom where the joist actually sets. And I'll go ahead and coat the back of it too. You can see it just has an appearance of, uh, well, Elmer's glue. It's kind of thick. And I just got an old paintbrush that uh, I'm just going to dip it down in there. And I'm just going to give this a good coating. I'll do every pocket like this and this gives us some protection against moisture during the construction and also when I put the the joist in there I will caulk around the top of it to keep another little insurance policy from keeping the, the moisture from getting down in there.